Across the Missouri River in Iowa, you won't find center pivots, but you will find the same battle to slow erosion and the loss of fertilizer. Dick Sloan, a farmer in eastern Iowa near Cedar Rapids, doesn't have sandy soils. Here, farmers have installed systems of underground pipe that help drain excess water off fields. The soil needs to have a proper drainage, and if they don't have that, the crops suffer dramatically. So tile has been one way that we learned how to farm these soils productively. But tiles drain directly into nearby streams and rivers, often carrying fertilizer and pesticides with the water. This kind of field runoff isn't regulated, and Iowa has some of the worst water pollution in the Midwest. Sloan is well aware of this. He uses no-till and cover crops to keep the movement of fertilizer to a minimum. If I'm, you can see how everything's kind of knitted together. It's still hooked on. He's also focused on slowing down rainwater. Cover crops help, as do planting prairie strips. The idea here is that as water moves down across the field, it encounters this contoured strip across the field that stop any residue from getting through there and, and help filter the water better. Sloan uses the same seeds and tools as other commercial crop farmers. But he says he likes to think of his farm as an example of what's possible to reduce agriculture's environmental impact. We could grow excellent crops and keep those nutrients cycling and have less water getting polluted as it goes down to the Cedar River and then on down to the Mississippi and down to the Gulf. So that's the hope. Sloan has worked with former Iowa Extension agent Chad Ingalls to develop his solutions. Ingalls has worked on numerous farmer-led projects on impaired watersheds in northeast Iowa. One new tool that Ingalls has helped farmers try out is something you can't see. It's called a bioreactor. So water from this field would normally dump right out into this ditch behind us, but we have it go through this structure and there's a set of gates on the inside that diverts it into the bioreactor that's underneath this grassy area. And the bioreactor is just a trench that's 100 feet long and 30 feet wide and it's filled with wood chips. The nitrate-laden water that passes through the bed of wood chips gets cleaned by microbes that turn the nitrates back into nitrogen gas. I think almost every field needs some kind of practice, whether it's a bioreactor, no-till, just better nitrogen and phosphorus management. It's going to take a wide range of things. Ingle says all these strategies and tools will be successful if farmers can get the education and support they need. If that practice doesn't make sense, they're probably going to try something different. But if that practice is profitable and sustainable in the long run, they're going to stick with it. Craig Cox with the Environmental Working Group in Ames, Iowa, agrees that bioreactors and prairie strips work. But he says many farmers aren't using them enough. Otherwise, the water would be in a lot better shape than it is. The federal government has spent more than $3 million to support measures that reduce water pollution from Iowa farms. But Cox says voluntary measures don't work. If you can voluntarily install a practice, you can also voluntarily take it out. His group did a study to measure the use of two of those common practices and found that over a five-year period, the net gain was negligible. You know, here's the good news story. We got a buffer, a new buffer, but here's the bad news story, right? We had a buffer, now we don't have one anymore. To really solve the water quality challenge, Cox says we should establish a set of mandatory conservation practices, like the ones farmers already use now. Maybe that list is not the right list everywhere. But the point is we think there really has to be a list. And, and it's not optional. But Dick Sloan says regulation isn't the way to go. People have a natural negative reaction to regulation. Anybody would. It's not just farmers are just so much like everybody else. It's going to take time for them to question what they're doing. Farmers are very independent, but the reality is, is it, it needs to be something that we pay attention to because water quality, the nitrate in the water can be a very detrimental thing to humans. If we won't be stewards ourselves, someone will have to help us be a steward. So what's the solution? It depends on who you ask, but probably some combination of technology, 
on-farm stewardship, regulation, and cooperation among many different players. We certainly can't fault our predecessors for managing the best they knew how at the time. It's incumbent on us today, I think, to use, take advantage of the technologies we have today to use those as best we can. And this is a solvable problem. It's just everyone has to do their part. A lot of people are like, oh, I've been doing this this way for 30 years and I'm not going to change now. And that attitude will not last for our children and grandchildren. You know, we're going to have to adapt.